Hi there, Katie. Hello, Vicki. Happy Friday to you as well. It's been kind of Okay, it looks like my internet is acting a little funky again. I don't know what the problem has been this week. It's like it doesn't go out completely, but it kind of will just go out for a moment and then get right back in. So I'm not sure what that is all about, but it happened the other day. Um, and I did look at the video um, after it was doing that. I believe it was Wednesday evening or maybe it was Monday. Anyways, um, it's sort of, well, the video's not too bad. I'll just put it that way. Um, I wondered if it would be um, clicking out too many words and things like that. Um, it wasn't too bad though. So we're just gonna go right ahead and um, with our Facebook Live and hope for the best and we'll just keep right on going. So um, just so you know, if that is happening, it looks like today that it's on my end that that's happening. Happy Friday. Welcome to Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. I'm so happy you're here. Um, I've got a fun project to show for you, um, to show you today. On Wednesday, type of gift card holder, very easy to make. And today I'm showing you a different type. The type I'm showing you today, you're actually using designer series paper as the base of your gift card holder whereas the one we made on Wednesday was a cardstock base. So um, quite a bit different, but just as easy as the one you saw on Wednesday. I'm going to flip my camera around now while I'm doing that. Please invite others to um, share in this Facebook Live by clicking on share and uh, jumping on with us. To those of you who did already share, thank you. Um, give me a moment, a few seconds. I'm going to flip my camera around so we can get started on today's gift card holder project. So for today's gift card holder project, I wanted to show you that we will be using the designer series paper painted Christmas, and then I'll be using um, some of the dies from the Christmas season bundle and we'll be using Christmas to remember. These, um, the suite can be found on pages 16, 17, 18, and 19 of the holiday catalog. All right, 16, 17, 18, 19 of the holiday catalog. If you haven't seen this ribbon, gorgeous, cherry cobbler and gold. So that's where you can find those products. You will need to do some scoring. So once you've cut your designer series paper down to five and a half by 12 inches, you'll want to make sure that you have your scoring blade for your trimmer ready. You'll also need to open up that, the arm of your trimmer for the score, starting with five and a half by 12 inches of designer series paper. And your first, first score line will be at three and a half inches, then slide it on down to seven and three quarters inch. And then the last score line will be at nine and seven eighths. Okay, I'll go over by 12 inches of designer series paper. You're going to score it three and a half, seven and three quarters, and nine and seven eighths. And I'm going to make a few of these just so I can give a few away today. So be sure to stay on the whole time. Once you've cut and scored, you're going to need to score lines nicely. On the small flap, you're actually going to fold that back in on itself. All right, so here's our score lines, three and a half, seven and three quarters, nine and seven eighths. 
the top is just folded like that. The bottom, you're going to fold it and then fold that small flap back on itself. And now we're just going to adhere this flap to the bottom portion of that. Now this is what we're going to use to form our pocket. Before you adhere that though, put your designer series or put your white cardstock on the inside or whatever your neutral cardstock is. It doesn't always have to be white. In fact, I'll show you an example of that in one that we make. So now I'm ready to adhere the edges of my pocket. Well, Anna, I see Miriam, Carol, Fran, Mary Lou. Did I miss anybody? Hi, Joan and Vicki and Katie. And that is the basis of your um, gift card holder. So now we're going to dress it up a little bit. I've cut a piece of coordinating cardstock. This is real red, so I can bring out those red berries. And it measures three quarters inch by five and a half. And what I'm going to, to do is just adhere it to the back of that flap, the back of that front flap. I think the easiest way to do this is to put just a narrow line of the multi-purpose glue on the cardstock and then lay the edge where you want it on top as much of that cardstock showing as you like. Or you can leave just a little bit. My preference is to leave just a little bit, but again, you do what you like best. straight and then I have that let's add how about love and joy come to you and may it last the whole year through so I'm once again wanting to bring out those red berries I'm going to stamp my sentiment with real red ink And then I'll use, whoops, I'll use one of the dies. So Christmas to remember. And I, and I like to call the Painted Christmas one of those mega bundles or mega sweets because it actually comes with two bundles. One, this is the one bundle, Christmas season. All right. The sentiments are in a second bundle and it comes with this um, pine and pine cone die. So I'm using the stamp set of one and the dies of another. And I think I'm gonna use this big. What I really like about this die set is, well, I like it all, I'll admit that, I like it all. But the fact that it has all of these dies that we can use for very sen various sentiments makes it so very versatile. I'll be able to use these dies, these open dies, with lots of my other stamp sets as well. And it doesn't have to just be for, um, for sentiments. Like this is a good one to stamp the penguin. And instead of punching that penguin out dimensionals and put it on a label. I'm using my mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. I just find this to be so convenient. It probably, I would say, cuts out probably 95, 98% of our dies that we have in our collection. Set this 
here. And then I'll add this to of my gift card holder with some dimensionals. Hi there, Jan. And hello, Susan. Look, we've got people all the way from the other side of the country. Oh, and there's Joan, Washington State, Oregon, and Alaska. Wow. I need. I think I need to take a trip. <laughs> Go out to the Northwest and I could um, visit all of you. How cool would that be? We could stamp together. Notice that when I put my dimensionals on the back of my label, I actually was putting the dimensionals at the top. That way, I'm sure that I'm not gonna have any adhesive showing on the part uh, that hangs over, all right? That's very important. All right, now I'm going to use the Evening Evergreen Open Weave Ribbon to make a bow, one of the coordinating colors in the Painted Christmas DSP. This DSP is really um, pretty traditional in its images, in its colors, reds and greens. There's some brown and crumb cake in there. Um, and the images are holly and berries and pine and pine cones. So um, pretty traditional all the way around. Jan says, that sounds fun. To be honest, I, I may have mentioned this on a Facebook Live in the past. I have this dream as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator that I will travel to different places in the U.S. Of course, I'd love to travel the world doing this, but it'll start in different places and meet um, different followers and customers and other demonstrators that I don't meet in person because of the distance. And I've really missed um, going to Stampin' Up! live events. It's just always so exciting for me to meet new people who share my interests. Um, and I get to learn so much about where they're from and um, just more about them, more beyond just stamping. So there is our first gift card holder, the nice little pocket. I still have plenty of room to write a message here if I like. Would you like? I think we should because there's just a lot of fabulous paper in this pack. All right. So again, I have pre-cut my designer series paper to be five and a half inches by 12 inches, okay? Five and a half inches by 12 inches. And with the long side at the top, I'm going to make three score lines. The first one is at three and a half. The next one is at seven and three quarters. And the last one is at nine and seven eighths. Bone folder. Oh, come on. To burnish all these score lines, the back side of that DSP is pretty too. It's just that soft seafoam color, whoops, um, with white holly leaves and berries. Real simple and elegant. And now I'm ready to um, do some adhering. Just using a little bit of my multi-purpose to adhere that small flap back onto itself. So this is what it looks like if it, I, I open up the whole thing. That small flap on the end, I just adhered it back on itself. Um, Katie, the measurement of the white is standard, five and a quarter by four inches. So the finished gift card holder has our A2 cards, our standard cards five and a quarter 
five and a quarter, no, four and a quarter by five and a half inches is the standard size card um, here in the US. And this gift card holder finished and folded is the same, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Therefore, our white or whatever we're using on the inside is our usual four inch by five and a quarter. Good question. Now I'm going to, whoops, form the pocket. Get that out of the way. Just wanna hold that for a few seconds so that, see? Again, I have a strip of three quarter inches by five and a half inches. And I'm just going to add this to the bottom of the front flap. But make sure you adhere it to the back side. And then we will need to on this one, instead of using white for the label, I'm going to use that soft seafoam color. Goes with the inside print as well as some of the leaves on that larger print. And I'm going to stamp it in garden green. Lots of greens in here. Garden green, evening evergreen, and the soft seafoam. So I'm stamping, stamping with the garden green, just a simple Merry Christmas. And once again, I have a fabulous die to cut this out. I'm actually using my um, mini Stampin' a Cut and Emboss machine Number one, more than I thought I would. And number two, even more than I do the large standard size machine. The size convenience is just easy and light to grab. And if I'm making multiple things where I need to do lots of die cutting, it's not taking up so much room on my workspace. That's what I love about this mini machine. I want to show you on this particular die, and I, ho I hope you'll be able to see this. I'll hold it up close. On this particular die, not only does it cut out the shape, but it gives you this nice little edge, that extra edge for, um, almost acts like as an embellishment on the cut piece itself. I just thought that was really neat when I Again, if the Facebook Live is cutting in and out real briefly, I think it's coming from my end. It happened one other in one other Facebook Live this week, and I don't know why. I do live in an area where there's a lot of new construction going on, and I don't know if it has something to do with that, but it just, um, this is the second time this week that that happened. All right, how about a pretty bow of, you could also add, um, let's see, red rhinestones, the gold gilded gems, the holiday rhinestones, um, just so, so many great embellishments and ribbons and tr trims to choose from the ribbon I used on the first gift card holder. That would work on this one as well. Gold would be always a nice accent color for reds and greens. Okay, I'm gonna redo that one. That one's all bunched up and it's not laying the way I want it to. Okay, that's better. 
When you're making your bows, always make sure you have enough ribbon. And that's why I like to actually leave mine on the bolt instead of cutting it off in pieces. But if you leave yourself enough ribbon, you have to work with while you're adjusting, adjusting the loops and the tails. So people ask, how do you make a perfect bow? Well, you know what? It's not perfect the first time. It's that I leave enough ribbon that I can play with the size of the loops and tails until I get it the way I want it. And there's nothing special about the way I tie it. I tie it like I tie my shoe. But it is, I get that it is different tying ribbon. We're not looking at how pretty our shoelaces are tied. But we do want that for our cards and our other paper crafts. And then one of the nut is all you need. I think that is so lovely. So lovely. Look at the two of these. And it's so simple. It took minutes to make each of these. And this is that time of year, December, that month where we're looking like, oh, I have all this pretty holiday designer series paper. How am I going to use it? This is an awesome way to use it. Now I want to do one more with you. Well, actually maybe two, two, two. All right, for this one, and the reason is it's also that time of year where I'm, I'm looking at my holiday catalog products and I'm thinking to myself, okay, what is truly 100% holiday and holiday only? And then what are the things, um, the products that I can use beyond the holidays, beyond Christmas. Whoops, need to make sure I've got my scoring tool. Scoring at three and a half, seven and three quarters, and then nine and seven eighths. Now, for this particular designer series paper, the next two I'm going to show you. We can actually use this one, and I'll show you this one too. Isn't this pretty? Yeah, you can think, oh, that's beautiful for Christmas. But you know what? Both of these patterns, even the back side, while it's a Christmas color, it's not necessarily just for Christmas, right? So I'm thinking with this, this could be a really nice birthday gift card holder. And it could works for a masculine gift card holder as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is adhere that small flap. I'm gonna add a neutral to the inside. I've got a white here, but you could also add um, the crumb cake. In fact, why don't we do that? For this one. We'll just change it up a little bit. Why? Because we can and it's fun. It's always fun to mix and match, isn't it? So I'm going to cut my piece of crumb cake cardstock to five and a quarter by four inches. And while I'm doing that, I'm also oops, going to cut a strip of this, three quarters by, and I want this five and a half. I'm kind of ad-libbing right here now. So I'm going to make this my neutral. All right, we could even layer it again with some white there if you wanted. Just kind of brightens it up. And to do that, I would have my next layer be five, three and three quarters. So again, not something, not at all something that's necessary, but just something you might enjoy doing to change things up. So let me add.
Katie had and I have to admit this I really have not used the painted Christmas suite very much I own it all but I have not used it much so I was excited to pull it out for today's projects the gift card holders DSP gift card holders great way to use up your DSP they're simple they're fun to make it's easy to mix and match the DSP and the colors and then you have that and I think what I'm going to do with this I thought I had a piece here yes um, hmm originally I was going to do that I'm trying to I'm thinking I like the dark color better. But I'm also thinking I could probably use both colors. Let's see. I don't know, what do you think? Any thoughts? We could also add some more red. And you can always change up these. Help me out here. What are you thinking? Do you like both colors? Vicki says she prefers the dark. I think I do too, but I am gonna change it up just a little bit here. I'm gonna actually use two pieces of cardstock. I think I want the early espresso on the top there. Um, that is true, Katie, the, the dark early espresso makes those pine cones pop a little. But we're gonna do this. This time I'm putting, do you see the difference here? This time I'm putting that piece of three quarters inch by five and a half inch on the front instead of the back. And then with this one, and I'm going, going to compare and see which I like better. And you can help me. Mary Lou says go with both colors. So Mary Lou, I have real red and crumb cake. And what I wanna do is put one on the back. So here's what it looks like with the crumb cake. Here's what it looks like with the red. Ooh, very pretty. What are your thoughts, Mary Lou? I think I know what I want to do. Let's let's go. Uh, what's the word? Let's go rogue. Oh, Mary Lou, I thought for sure you would choose red. That is so funny. Goes to show you I can't read minds, but I'm still watch what I do. Okay, so this is what I have now. And where's that crumb? I'm going to stamp. I'm going to actually stamp for the next, um, let's see, is this one I used? I used Holly Jolly. What did I use? Nope, okay, I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to stamp it once in red. And Mary Lou, this will be totally be your call on this. I stamped it with red and I'm gonna clean this off. And then I'm going to stamp it with early espresso. 
Yeah, Jan, the internet is glitching for some reason today. I really don't know. I don't, I live in an area where there's lots of new construction. I don't know if something's going on outside. It did it one other time this week. So Mary Lou, you tell me, do you like the dark brown? Have a holly jolly Christmas? Or do you like it in the red? And I will cut out whichever one that is your preference, Mary Lou. So I'll be using my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And this time I will need the smaller of these two. Mary Lou says the red. Okay, Mary Lou, I am going with you this time. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to know, Gian, thank you. I'm glad to know that you're still able to follow along okay. It's the weirdest thing, isn't it? Goes out for like, not even a second. It's like just a moment. I've, and I don't, I can't figure out why. Hopefully it doesn't last beyond this week though. This die also gives you a fun little edge all the way around it as well. Can you see that detail? I do like that. Another thing about these, um, this die collection, there is a whole lot in here, but it's like you could cut out one and then put your sentiment on the other one and layer it on top of the larger one. You might even do it with these two. So that's a fun way to use these. I like to look at my products and find multiple ways to use them all. And um, the set just makes that really easy to do. All right, I'm going to add this with dimensionals. I have one more to show you with another little variation, and then um, I'll quickly show you all of them again. Now, one ribbon that would be kind of neat with the um, early espresso faux suede ribbon from our annual catalog, that would be really nice with this. It's called early espresso faux suede ribbon, um, but I'm out of that and don't have any more. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think, what do I want to add here as far as embellishments? Let's give it, let's see, there's my holiday rhinestones. Hmm. I'm thinking I want to go with my gilded gems. I actually want the small ones. These have been super popular and I can completely understand why. Um, deciding. I think I'll go with just two of the small ones. Tell me, is this a gift card holder that you will try? Of course, you could make it with cardstock and then decorate it but in my opinion it's super fun and super easy to um, make it with your designer series paper number one you get to show off our beautiful papers and it's just so easy it's nice too that because even with my embellishing and putting a gift card holder in here it's not going to be real thick to put it through the mail even with your gift card in there um, because our our uh, designer series paper is a little bit um, thinner than our cardstock is. All right, here is the last one. And I thought of this just at the last moment before I went live. So I thought, you know what? I'm just I'm just going for it. So same thing. I'm starting with DSP that measures five and a half by twelve inches. I'm going to score three times. 
once at three and a half, once at seven and three quarters, and once at nine and seven eighths. Now, and if you don't already, I love to mix and match colors, but I also like things to match, all right? I like to change things up and try new things, but I also like things to match. Now, I looked at this, and can you guess what's bothering me about this? And it, sh it shouldn't, it's really not that big of a deal, but it kind of bothers me a little bit that we have two very different greens, very different. And to me, this is not working as, as I would like it to. Like with our other ones, I feel like the different prints really worked well together, even this one. All right, and this has got that real light shade of soft sea foam, but it's throughout the whole print. So I feel like these really work well together, but for some reason, this just isn't doing it for me. So I got to thinking, how could I change this up? So I'm going to go ahead and put my white cardstock in for the center. And then I'm going to change up the pocket portion. With the small flap back on itself, I'm actually going to fold it in this way and have this be my gift card holder. All right, so just a real simple version. Of course, you're still going to see the other print partially, um, but it's not as evident a change here. Like, I just don't feel, I never would have put these two together. So I'm going to fold it in and seal it this way and then I'll show you how you can create some contrast on the, because I, I do like the contrast in the prints showing. Okay, and I'll make my pocket. Okay, I was going to give away um, three gift card holders today, but since I decided to add this fourth one to show you a little bit different variation. Um, I guess I'll have to give away four. I hope that's okay with you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to use this early espresso. We're gonna change it up a bit. I'm going to cut this piece five five and a half inches by hmm I'm deciding if I want this in the same place maybe I'll do something even different even more different I could do this right here and then when this closes it gives me a little bit of the same DSP and then early espresso. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I just wanted to do this so that you can see, you can mix and match, you can change things as you go along and it's all good. Just do what comes to you. You don't have to follow my directions exactly. If you want to go a different direction, by all means do. And what I love about doing things like this, kind of creating on the fly, so to speak, like I am with this, um, this particular gift card holder, the others I had planned, but this one, I just kind of came to me at the last minute. And I thought, I can do this, create on the fly, it kind of challenges us and it actually, um, in my opinion, makes us all more creative. Let our, allow our brain to think outside the box. And I am going to add just a little bit more color there by putting 
a small strip of this evening evergreen cardstock. Now, if you're looking at this, and you're thinking, okay, yeah, I can see that as a nice Christmas gift card holder. Can you also see it as a gift card holder for something else? Perhaps a birthday. Perhaps somebody has a, um, especially like college levels, perhaps somebody has a um, winter graduation Perhaps somebody's moving away and you want to give them a little, little gift to help them out in their new home. You can gift them a gift card. Isn't that fun? And then maybe we want to put happy birthday on here instead or congratulations. Maybe somebody got um, a promotion or a new job or a new home. There are so many reasons you can make pretty gift cards and there are so many designer series papers that we have that at first glance, we might think are for the holidays, but with a little more thought, we can use them for other things. But since I have the, um, since I have, the Christmas to Remember stamp set out. This is the one I'm going to use. And I'm going to stamp, I'm going to stamp, oh, that's not big enough, is it? What was I thinking? I'm going to stamp, ooh, I'm not sure, Evening Evergreen or Early Espresso. I think they both would work really well. So why not try them both, huh? And then we'll use one of the fun dies to cut these out. This one says, friends like you make the season special. And I can clean this off using my Simply Chamois. I've got it off to the side where I always keep it handy. If you don't have a Simply Chamois, oh, you are, ooh, which do you like better? Jan, how about you? Are you still with me, Jan? Do you like the Evening Evergreen, that deep dark green? Or do you like the Early Espresso Brown? And while I'm waiting for your response, I'm going to pull out another die from that collection. This die is fun too, because really it looks good both directions. It's just a matter of what your preference is, but I just think it's kind of neat that you can switch that around. Okay, maybe Jan's not on anymore. I see that Katie and Miriam have both, Katie and Miriam both suggested I go with the green. So that's what I will do. Oh, there's Jeanne. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do this. Um, let's stand, oh, let's um, cut out the green. But Jeanne, I'm gonna get some more early espresso in there sentiment and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the same die and I'm going to cut early espresso cardstock with it. This, um, what I'm going to show you works really well using punches also, but this is a way for us to add some background to our sentiments and our punches or our die cuts. So you can do it either direction. You can cut it in half this way and add that little bit of cardstock on the left and right, or you can cut it across horizontally and add to the top and the bottom. I think I will cut it. Jan says she likes green. You know, it's so hard when I ask these questions because 
um, there is a delay between what I'm doing and what you're seeing. So I ask the questions and then I wait and wait and wait and I think, oh, you know, maybe she doesn't want to answer. Or maybe she's not here. You know, I'll just go on. And then as soon as I start to go on, um, it shows up. So that's why if you're thinking I'm not waiting for people's answers, it's just that that delay, I don't always know how long to wait. It's kind of tricky. So now instead of just a white label on my card front, trying to get the left and right sides even. That's why I like using um, the multi-purpose glue for this purpose. Let's me move that a little. Oh, I like that. I'm thinking I might even want this right in the middle. But isn't that kind of neat how you can do that with your dies and punches? You can see what it looks like from the back. So you can make You can change up your label in this way. Put that right there. I want to center that in that top flap. And then I'm going to use my Evening Evergreen Open Weave Ribbon again and make a bow for this. This ribbon is so great. It's really easy to tie because it is thin. I like the width of it too, that 3 8 inch. To me, that's my, my favorite width of ribbon to use on card making. Um, but because the ribbon is so thin, it really, even when you're not create much bulk on your card, so nice for mailing. I mail a lot of cards and I absolutely love the sheer ribbon. And that's just one of the many reasons why I love the sheer ribbon so much. And now I'm looking for my glue dot. Here they are. And I absolutely love how that turned out. So here you can see how, oh, here they are. So basically all of these, I can't even remember which one I made first. Did I make this one first maybe? Um, so these are all basically the same. And then on this last one, I changed things up by folding the end flap in instead of out. So now got the same print as on the front flap. And then I used some more cardstock, an extra piece of cardstock I put the label in a different place. I um, matted that label so it's got the early espresso showing on each side of it. And what do you think? Katie says, oh, these were fun. Gian says the last is her favorite. Wonderful. I'm so glad to hear you like these. All right. I will be giving four, all four of these away. So um, watch for the announcement. I have, um, I didn't post it yet, but I drew the names for the three gift card holders on Wednesday. So I'll have to post that too. Um, so look for that in the next hour or so from the last Facebook Live and this one. So two Facebooks Live, I gave three gift card holders away the other day and these four, um, it's the season of giving, spread the joy, have fun. Um, I love making things and giving them away. So thank you for being a part of today's Facebook Live and giving me the opportunity to share what I love to do with all of you. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. Um, I am going to mission for the weekend in addition to cleaning up my cleaning up my craft room. It's uh, you know it's trying to pull retiring things out and put the new in, etc. Um, but my big goal this week is to work on Christmas cards that I'll be sending out and to start wrapping gifts for my family. And, um, 
I guess that's about it. So right now I'm gonna jump outside and get a walk in and that always feels good and I'll, that'll be my break for the afternoon to get outside. Thank you for um, being here today. If you would like to win one of these gift card holders, please just type the words gift card holder in the comments now. All right, gift card holders. And I will draw names of three lucky winners. Or I'm sorry, four. 